So now that we can uh, take care of addition and subtraction together, multiplication and division together when we're trying to solve equations, now we're going to combine them. Something a little bit more complicated, we might have to use both. We will have to use both. So in an example like this first one, given in 2.3, the very first thing we want to do is we want to isolate the x term. So the coefficient and whatever variable is there, in this case it's x. So we want to isolate the x term. So I want 2x on its own. Whatever coefficient is on the front of x needs to stay with it 2 for now. We have to get that on its own before we can dig out x and get x isolated. So we need to move 3 to the other side. We need to get rid of it. So we subtract 3 from both sides. Again, cancels over here. We're left with 2x on the left and 16 on the right. So now that we have that x term isolated, it's on its own along with the coefficient. We want to isolate x. So before we just wanted that term on its own, and then we want to take care of whatever coefficient is on the front. I want that to be a 1. So what do we need to do? I have a whole number out on the front, so I'm going to do division. Divide both sides by 2. These are going to cancel. We'll be left with x is equal to 8. But again, whenever we solve any equation, we want to plug it back into the original, check, make sure that it actually works. So, third thing we want to do is always check. Is it true that 2 times 8 plus 3 really equals 19? So, 8 times 2 gives me 16 plus 3 is 19. Yes. So, you could put it in set notation if you prefer. Um, so, in this case, our solution set, this just means solution set. Things that make this equation true. We can only plug in 8. And we verified that it worked with that check. Okay. So, getting you warmed up. Another example. 5x plus 13 equals negative 11. We want to isolate the x term, get that on its own, then just get x by itself. So, first thing we need to take care of, moving 13 to the other side. I'm not going to write minus 13 on the left-hand side. From this point on, we know it's going to move over here. So, I have 5x is equal to negative... 24. Okay, so we isolated that x term. Now I need just x on its own. So what has to happen? We need to divide both sides by 5. So those are going to cancel. I'm left with x. And what do you notice over here? That doesn't evaluate nice. But we can have fractions for an answer. That's valid. We just need to plug it back in, check and make sure that it actually works. So, let's do that. Check. Is it true that 5 times what I'm plugging in x to b plus 13, is that really equal to negative 11? So, when we leave it in that fraction form when we have an answer, generally it works out nice for us when we plug it back in to check. Because, in this case, what happens to those 5s? 5 divided by 5 gone. So I'm looking at minus 24 plus 13. Is that equal to minus 11? It is. So we verified my solution set contains the value minus 24 fifths. When I plug that in, makes my equation true. All right, so one for you to try. Solve for x. So what did you have to take care of first? We want the x term on its own, so we need to add 7 to both sides. When we do that, we're looking at minus 2x on the left, and what on the right? Minus 8. Once that x term is isolated, now we want x on its own. I want that to be a coefficient of 1 out on the front. So we need to divide both sides by 2, negative 2, excuse me, there was a negative out on the front. So we're left with x since those cancel, and x is equal to positive 4. 
And again, we want to check. Plug it back in. Make sure that it's actually true. Does that really equal minus 15? So I'm looking at minus 8, minus 7. Yeah, that equals minus 15. So my solution set includes 4. It's the only thing I can plug in to this equation and make it hold true. So there are actually a few more for you to try on the next page. So, as you took A, look at those examples. What did you have to take care of first in that first example? We had to move the negative 2. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. It'll be gone on the right. We'll be left with 12 is equal to 3x. We've isolated the x term. Now we want coefficient of 1 out on the front. So when we do that division, x is going to be equal to 4. If you plug it back in and check, make sure that it actually works. It does. So I'm going to tell you my solution set is 4 for that problem. Same story happens for decimals. Works just the same, just a little bit more work. So the first thing that has to move, 16.3, because I want whatever variable I'm looking at, that term on its own. So we'll subtract that from both sides. It'll be gone on the left, move to the right. So we're looking at minus 6.2y is equal to minus 28.8. I want y to be on its own. I want a coefficient of 1 on, on the front. So I'm going to divide both sides. A negative divided by negative is going to give me a positive. So my decimal needs to be positive in the end. And again, check and make sure. Plug it back into the original, make sure that it works. I'm just going to tell you that it does. All right. So sometimes it might happen where, in these cases, our x terms were all grouped together and our y terms were all grouped together. We didn't have to combine any of those in the very beginning. But, like the next example, sometimes we do have to collect like terms, first of all. Because yes, my x's are on the same side together, but I need them as one whole quantity. So eventually I can get x on its own. So, we'll combine our like terms. Any of the buts that are matching, we want to combine. So, I have two factors of x and three factors of x. Adding them together, we have five. Now, it looks like what we've seen before, we can take care of that. So, what has to happen? x is already on its own. That term is isolated. We want a coefficient one out on the front. So, I'm looking at x equal to three. We always want to plug it back in, make sure. So we can check in the original. In the original, just in case you've made mistakes down here. So 2 times 3 plus 3 times 3. Does that really equal 15? So I've got 6 and 9. Yes, it does work. So that solution set, oh, the ugly 3, contains the value 3. All right. So, get all the terms with a variable on one side and all of the constants on the other. We need to have those split up. In all of these cases, we were working towards that setup. When I have all the x terms on one side, constants on the other. y terms, whatever variable we're dealing with, constants on the other. Isolated constants. Okay. So, let's do another one. Next example, 6x plus 4 minus 8x equals 12 minus 3x plus 9. Definitely more complicated than what we've seen, but we can handle it. Let's just combine on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side first. Then we'll deal with getting the variables on one, constants on the other. So what can we combine on the left-hand side? We can combine 6x minus 8x. That will give us minus 2x. And we still have that constant. Tagging along. Anything to combine over here is going to be 12 and 9. So we're going to have 21 minus 3x. So we can't combine on each side anymore since these are not like terms. Neither are those. So we need to group together our variables and group together those constants, get them on the same side. So, I'm going to go ahead and add 3x 
to both sides. Because I want to move it. So now over here I'm looking at in total one factor of x. And we need to get those constants um, together. So we need to subtract 4 from both sides. So our solution in that case, 17. We always want to check, plug it back into the original, make sure that it works. So check. Does 6 times 17 plus 4 minus 8 times 17 equal 12 minus 3 times 17 plus 9? Is it true? It's long, but it works. So in the end, we come up down to minus 30 is equal to minus 30, which is true. So solution set contains the value 17. So when we have a linear case, when our variable only has the highest power 1, it's not too um, necessary for us to check the solution. But when we have more powers, then it is necessary to check the solutions, because we could have some that don't work. So although it's not completely necessary now, it's a good habit to get into. All right, so next page. Give it a shot. Solve for x. So in this first problem, much like the last, we want to work on the left, work on the right. Combine what we can, then we'll start isolating x. So on the left-hand side, we can combine 7x and 3x. Together, that'll give us 10. And over on the right, we can combine our constants, 2 and 14. That'll give us 16. So we need to get the x's together and the constants together. Doesn't matter which one you move. So I could subtract 10x from both sides or add 9x. I like to keep things positive, so I'm going to add 9x. So I've got 19 factors of x over here, constant left. I need to move minus 16 to the other side. So when I add 16 to both sides, I'm looking at 32 over on the right. So now that my x term is isolated, I want to make that a coefficient 1 out on the front. So we need to divide by 19 on both sides. And we have our solution. We can plug it back in and check. Make sure that it works. I'll just tell you that it does. So, we did a check. My solution set contains that one value, 32 over 19. So, get together all of your constants and all of your variable terms. Then, separate them with that equal sign. Get x or whatever variable you're dealing with on its own.